right to remain silent. The Perfect Couple, a Netflix miniseries based on Ellen Hildebrand's book, begins with the Winbury and Sachs families gathering on Nantucket Island for Amelia and Benji's wedding. However, the joyous occasion takes a dark turn when Amelia discovers her best friend and maid of honor, Merritt, dead in the water. As the police investigate, they uncover various motives among the main characters, including an affair between Merritt and Tag, which complicates the case. The shocking ending reveals Abby as the killer, driven by a secret that challenges perceptions of public images versus reality. Why Abby Killed Merritt in The Perfect Couple Until the latter half of the series finale, viewers of The Perfect Killer are left in the dark about how Merritt died. It was later discovered that Merritt was murdered by Abby, who crushed up pills, put them in her juice glass, dragged her into the pool, and held her head underwater. Money was Abby's equally compelling motive for wishing Merritt dead, even though others had a far more obvious one. Even though Will's birthday is coming up soon, the Winbury children won't get their trust money until the youngest child turns 18. Especially Abby, who needed a new place to live, and Thomas, who owed Isabel money, were depending on their trust monies. The news of Merritt's pregnancy nearly derailed their plans since, with Tag as the father, they would have to endure another 18 years of waiting before they would receive any financial compensation. Isabel stopped Thomas from threatening Merritt into having an abortion. Therefore, Abby chose to complete the task independently. In The Perfect Couple, not only was Abby unwittingly complicit in the murder, but so did Karen and Thomas. Thomas was the one who stole the medicines that Abby crushed. Pills from those around him would be a regular occurrence for him to steal. Unfortunately, Merritt was drugged by drugs that were in Karen's travel pill box. For the purpose of euthanasia, she unlawfully obtained three pentabarbital pills in the event that her cancer progressed further. Neither Thomas nor Karen were directly involved in the murder, though. What happened to Merritt's killer? The Winbury estate was the site of Abby's arrest and subsequent handcuffing, after the police learned of her actions. Whereas in Ellen Hildebrand's titular book The Murderer is absolved of all responsibility due to the autopsy ruling, this is a complete break from the norm. The fact that the law punishes murderers regardless of their socioeconomic status is made abundantly evident when Abby is arrested in the Netflix series. Despite the fact that they may have been indicted for crimes from a legal aspect, Thomas and Karen were fortunate not to face charges of being unintentionally implicated in Merritt's death. Do Amelia and Benji stay together? The perfect couple focused on the wedding of Benji and Amelia, although it was clear from the beginning that Amelia wasn't sure she wanted to marry him. Benji was too perfect for her, therefore she couldn't feel any feelings for him. Benji was someone she wanted to love so badly, but she just couldn't get herself to feel it. It probably didn't help that the other members of the Winbury family teased and insulted her, because she never seemed to belong there. Disagreement between Amelia and the Winberries highlighted the disparity in upbringing between Benji and Amelia. But the breakup between Amelia and Benji didn't happen until the miniseries ended on Netflix. When Amelia reconnected with Benji's best buddy shooter, their relationship began to decline. From their past encounters, she had developed affections for him. Despite their best efforts, their feelings for one another kept resurfacing at the most inopportune moments during the event. Also, Amelia learned that Benji and her weren't social outcasts due of Shooter's wealth when she found out that Shooter was wealthy as well. Despite their economic disparity, Shooter and Amelia were deeply connected on an emotional, intellectual, and value-based level. The last episode ends with her and Benji parting ways. The significance of Merritt's pregnancy. Everyone in the perfect couple reacts differently to Merritt's pregnancy. Pregnancy would do harm to each person in their own unique way. The one effect that would be felt most consistently by the Winbury children would be the delay in receiving their trust payments in the event that Merritt became a parent. Since Greer's novels were so successful because of her picture-perfect marriage to Tag, an adulterous affair and subsequent pregnancy would be disastrous for her profession. Since Merritt is the best friend of the outsider, the matriarch would probably find a way to blame Amelia, based on how Greer treats her. Not only that, but the trust fund would have gone to Isabel since Thomas owed her money. Although Tag's marriage was already in trouble, 
The events of the perfect couple make it quite obvious that he intends to have it destroyed. If Merritt had lived through the pregnancy and given birth, she would have been much more vulnerable, as the Winbury family likely wouldn't have been there to support her. I see. <laughs> Greer regarded Amelia with the worst contempt and refused to recognize her as a family member during the perfect couple. She seems to have hated him at first because she wanted things to stay the same. Because Amelia didn't fit in with the Winbury's image, Greer felt compelled to shield them. Anger at Amelia's potential for freedom became clear at the conclusion of the perfect couple, which revealed that Greer's anger was really jealousy. Everyone in Greer's family put their faith in her, and she established her business on the false premise that her family was ideal. Her life would be in utter disarray if she left. Contrarily, Amelia's life had not yet become intertwined with the family. They never had children together, and she was never married to Benji.